Hey everyone, so we are doing part two of the crematory tour at a new state-of-the-art facility. Our initial crematory tour that we did a few years ago was much more the industrial feel. We're now going to be looking around the new way that crematories are being built with welcoming family areas, viewing rooms, um, things being pretty with tile and much more welcoming atmosphere for families that want to be hands-on meet at the facility that the cremation is going to happen. So we are here today at Daisy Hill Crematory in Mount Pleasant, Michigan. So we are here at Daisy Hill, and this is Steve. He is one of the funeral directors and crematory operators that works here at the crematory and at the sister funeral home of this company. So tell us a little about the vision of the ladies, who women who started Daisy Hill and why they created a space that is like this. So the, the idea behind Daisy Hill was to, to bring um, cremation to the to the community as something that um, we see it going towards the families want to be involved the uh, usually a funeral director will meet with a family that's choosing cremation uh, make arrangements and um, then the next time you see the funeral director the um, you're getting the cremated remains um, so this facility was built to serve our community for those that are interested in witnessing the cremation um, so they can be involved. Um, uh, witnessing a cremation can bring further closure to a family, that they were involved, that they, they participated, and that's something that, that we value is, is bringing, you know, uh, full closure to the grieving process. Sometimes peace of mind, too. I know I've worked with families who even if they know the person is in your care the whole time and you, you trust the crematory, there's still some level of question. Am I, are you sure it's my loved one? Are you sure they're going? And when they can witness the whole them going in the retort and even wait for their loved one to come out of the retort and take them home with them almost, it takes any question out of their mind. So there is some peace of mind as following them through the process as much as they can. Right. So the ladies that started this, they didn't go for an industrial feel here. Not it's, at all. It's very yeah. contemporary, very cozy at the same time. Do you know kind of what they were envisioning in, in that aspect or just going for modern? Very family friendly, very comfortable. Um, we have several different levels of comfort. So if the family wants to witness the cremation, they can, they can witness the cremation in our witnessing room. Or if they just want to be here, um, they can they can be in one of our rooms that they don't have to watch that part of the, uh, part of the process. So we have we're we're here to serve several different levels of that comfort. And you also have Daisy cookies yes. that a local lady <laughs> makes. They're sugar cookie shaped like daisies, but because it's Daisy Hill, there's little Daisy cookies. There's a bathroom that has glitter grout. Like I can't get over the glitter grout, guys. I just the place is decorated so modern and contemporary like and you know I think we live in a culture that is very interior design focused and so being able to be working with a crematory that's in the times so to speak I think is always nice for someone as well and might click within this newer, newer generations that are in country cremation. So we're here at Daisy Hill and we are going to go on a little tour with Steve. Welcome to Daisy Hill Crematory. This is our lobby. This is where we have our urn showroom. This is where families enter. Um, we have a desk here for, for to greet families. In the next room here is we have another kind of urn showroom. This is our family lounge where we have more urns on display. We have comfortable seating for the family to, to hang out in here if they, if they choose to witness the cremation. Um, it's just one of those aspects in crematories that are up and coming when it comes to uh, cremation these days. 
Um, if a family wants to be involved, we want to give them a comfortable environment. This next room here is our witness room. Again, we have comfortable seating here. This is where the family will witness the cremation, uh, the start of the cremation. Um, we have, again, comfortable seating here as well as a window that looks out into our crematory area. What's nice about this space, as Steve was saying, is there is a viewing window here. So some families want to be present, want to see what is going on, but they don't want to be in where the machine is. They don't want to push the button. They just want to witness. And they can do that from this space when this window is open. So they can also be here, be close, and have the window closed if they don't want to be quite as much in a viewing area. So this allows them to be here, see the entrance to the machine here, see their loved one go in. So if there was a box with an individual on the cart here, Steve would start the machine and it is an auto load where the door is gonna open and then the machine is going to cycle that box into the machine and unload as the door comes down. You see how pretty this is? Whoa. Like floor to ceiling. Pretty tile. And this is just around the machine to make it look nice for when families come in here. Not something that does anything with function. It's about how things look for families. Like with that, most any funeral home and crematory you will go to, the person, when they're brought into the care of the funeral home, especially at the crematory, they're gonna be given an identification tag for the cremation process. So they receive that when they're received into the crematory, but that number and all that paperwork will also be on file at the funeral home eventually when they're received back into the funeral home's care. So we talked about these tags before. So these tags, some crematories will just leave them outside the machine with the individual while they're in the cremator. Sometimes they will put them in with them. Here at Daisy Hill, they do put this in with the individual. The number on this tag is gonna go on all the paperwork. So throughout the whole process, that person has a number that stays with them. So you hear on the news where, oh, somebody found an old box of cremated remains wherever and they can call that crematory and it tracks back to that number and you can tell who that person is if all you have is this. So this tag is very important along the process, but I know a lot of you ask about that. So this is in on the high tech side of how the machines are operated now. So I'm gonna have Steve tell us a bit about what we're looking at with these two if the machine was operating. So what is this top portion? So this, this top portion is the screen where we can see all of the information on uh, the timing of the cremation as well as um, the, um, the, uh, the temperatures of each chamber. Um, and it's required by the state to, to keep track of that. And so this, this dial here actually keeps track of what, uh, what uh, the heat is in one of the chambers that we have to maintain the cremation at. So then you've got all your input. You've got the weight, the type of container, if it's a male or female, what number of the day, because if your machine is hot from your first case, that's going to affect how the second case is going to um, cremate. So there's all these different things. You've got afterburner on or off, chamber burner number one, correct? Is that what C burner means? Yes. <laughs> Um, time, throat air, I don't even, what, what the heck is throat air? You need, you need air for cremation. So it's yep. giving an input of air, but the machine controls it, correct? Yes, yep, so fully you, automated. That's, it's kind of, I mean, you can run it from your phone now, right? Yes, yep. Like it's a bit, it's a bit more than just the start and stop models of the days of old. Right, yep. Um, hearth air. 
So what's the hearth? I mean, when you think of a fireplace, there's a hearth. So what mm -hmm. is the hearth? Is that the entrance of the machine as well here? The hearth air is actually the hearth. air that, <laughs> that actually enters the main chamber, where the throat air is the, the air that goes into the secondary chamber. So if we're looking at this picture, the deceased is put into this here. So this is the throat, that's the Yep, hearth. the throat air is the air that goes into the secondary chamber that is involved in the full combustion of the, the, uh, the material. Um, and the main chamber is the hearth air, which, uh, which um, helps the cremation um, occur. So Steve, this is not a channel on the TV up here. So tell us what we're looking at on this TV that you guys can watch. And you watch this on your phone too. Yep, yep, we can watch this from, uh, it's, it's uh, uploaded online so we can keep an eye on it. So it's our window to the outdoors. Um, this is a video uh, camera that we keep track of our, our stack that it's attached to the cremator. Um, we have to monitor any, uh, any smoke or what we call emissions that come out of the cremator. If there's any smoke coming out, that means that we have to make adjustments to make sure that the cremation is going along properly. Um, this is what um, this is what is we have to monitor this because uh, the EPA does not want any emissions. We have to keep the cremator at a certain temperature to make sure that everything is combusted before it's released into the air. And so this helps us uh, keep track of of making sure that we're doing things right. Well, especially if you're cremating certain types of boxes, like some caskets, some woods, and also when you have a heavy individual, when there's a lot of that adipose or fat that is catching on fire and it's burning extra hot and you can get different type of emissions from different things. Yeah, yeah a, a variety of uh, aspects of the cremation can cause emissions and that's um, something that we can sometimes predict but sometimes we can't predict it. So this helps us uh, make sure that um, we're keeping track of all of that. Yeah, so if all of a sudden there's black smoke and your neighbors are calling somebody, you're already on top of it before they even can call the fire department. <laughs> An important thing that a lot of crematories will now have in their facility is a cooler. At least one unit that will hold at least one or two individuals that maybe need to be held for a duration of time for paperwork to come through if the funeral home has no space left there and they need to maybe bring them over a little early. Very important. So this is our cremulator, or often called a processor. This is where the remains are, are broken down to a fine um, material that we release to families. So, so after the cremation, the cremated remains are allowed to cool and then they're actually brought here with the identification paperwork that we keep um, hung right here on the processor. Um, they're allowed to cool in here, and then we, we use uh, special tools to remove any large metals um, before we place them in the next part of the processor. Um, and this, uh, um, we have to remove those metals like any kind of um, implants, like uh, uh, artificial hips or knees, our shoulders um, and uh, before we put it in the next part of the cremulator. So when you pull out the pan, so once you rake out the machine and you get this pan, how large are the pieces? I mean, you're not cremating down to this ash in the machine. That's what happens here is you get the ashier granular type. So how big are pieces and what is kind of normal? Cremated remains are basically the bone structure. So, so some pieces actually still resemble the type of bone that they were, and, but they become very brittle and all of the um, body material is actually stripped from them. So um, it uh, becomes very brittle um, and, and kind of has like a powdery feel to it. But it's, it's, uh, the processor is made so we can break all those down so it can fit into a, a useful container. Because in most places it's illegal to give the family back a leg bone or a skull or a chunk of whatever that piece of the person was. And so they have to be broken down in a cremulator. So go ahead and oh, I'll let you open the door and show us the rest of it. 
So after we after we take out any large metals in this area, they're actually placed in a pan that you see here. That pan slides out and it goes into this side of the permulator. Uh, you just put it into this device here. So after the second part where the, the cremated remains are processed down to the fine granular um, uh, particles, um, that is when the processing processed remains are packaged. And we have a specialized funnel here um, and a cap that goes onto the, the container. And, and those are actually, this is what helps us put all the cremated remains into the containers. So after the second part of the processing, we actually package the remains in what we call a temporary container. This is for a temporary, this is for temporary holding of the cremated remains if a family has not picked out an urn yet. The cremated remains do go in a bag. The bag is closed um, and the identification tag that is cremated with the body actually is attached to this, um, this bag here. And then the container is closed. It is labeled with all of their identification name, the tag number, and our contact information if they have any questions. Well, we're finishing up our tour here at Daisy Hill. Thank you, Steve. Thanks thank for having you. us. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's nice to get to view a place that's new age. I don't know if new age. I mean, this is the way crematories are being built though now. So it's kind of nice to see a little behind the scenes peek at what you can expect at a lot of newer crematories if you want to be part of the process. Thank Great. you. Yep, thank you. and. Thank you for all your hard work. Um, you know, we want to make, we want cremation to not be in the minds of people that are, it's something scary. This is, um, this is something that is important to a family that choose cremation. And they want to know that a facility is, is, is managed by people that do care and it's, it's managed in a place that's, that's clean and, um, uh, you know, cremates, you know, with, with the right, you know, processor and stuff like that. So, so thank you for, for helping us show the community that. I'm glad to. Thanks guys. We'll see you on the next video. Bye. I'm crazy, but I promised glitter in the bathroom and it, I don't know if you guys can even see this, but it is glitter grout. How fun is that?